they came up and asked Jesus. Some of the greatest revelations in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's got your lion, man, ox, and eagle. And the things said are so simple. And very profound. And Jesus and the disciples entered into the ship. Well, they say, well, that's good. Well, wait a minute. How big was this ship? How big was that boat? I mean, Peter, James, John, all of them are fishermen. Philip and Andrew, Peter, James, John. Philip was a mathematician. I always had a calculator with him. He said, how many fish are going to take to feed all these people? And he took out his calculator and started beating it out. There's every kind of personality in there that you want to see that the Lord ministered to, even the devil himself. The thing about the devil in that is that it's always those that have eaten with you, dipped in the sop with you, that lift up their heel against you. It's not the guy at the bar room. It's not the devils out there. They know they're devils. They know they're going to hell. Or they don't believe nothing to God anyway. They're reprobate. But it's the enemies are those of your own household. That's the reason there'll be a great civil war in the church. The remnant of her seed. It's light against light against light. And against means that it is totally radically different than what it was before. That's the reason it's light. It didn't say light upon light upon light, which is precept upon precept, but it said Solomon built a house in three ranks in the tabernacles, light against light against light in three ranks, as it was in the days of Noah. So shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Well, the Noah's generation was perfect in his own generation, so there will be a people that's perfect in their own generation. They will be counted for the seed. And we've already gone through that. The 42nd generation is Christ. 41st is Jesus. But he's bringing many sons into glory. Y'all got a few minutes? Brother Don, I think I will take that. Take a look at Hebrews. Uh, Hebrews is, a, is a, a book on the... In that battle, I would like for me, and I'm going to say your dad, to inscribe it to you. Is there already anything written in there? That's yours. Let me see that. That is a wide margin, Cambridge. I want the church to know that I brought into Heron and Carol about eight to ten Bibles. Some of them out of the personal account, some of them out of the, out of the DBM account. And we didn't have a church account at that time. And this was one of them. I think, Bailey, they gave you one. Uh, this is one given to Chris. We bought these. I bought you a wine margin Concord, which you carry now. I bought you a, pub, a church publishing Bible, which you carry over there. You got it with you now. How many of these do you need? Now, I collect Bibles. I collect Bibles. But when somebody over here needs a Bible, that's a nice Bible. That's a Cambridge. It, it's, a, it's a Cambridge uh, presentation Bible. And uh, uh, what's the other? What's the one out of uh, Scotland that... Uh, that has the, some of the best Bible bindings in the world. What, what's the name of that? Uh, Allen, Allen, an Allen Bible. It's called, called a turquoise. It's the same Bible. The only thing is they take it off there and throw a, a, a goat skin on there and charge you $40 more than this one. So we're not giving back Bibles. I, yeah, no way. Huh? That's a good Bible. And the more, don't put a cover on you, your hands, and the moisture from your hands is what leathers that Bible. It, that's, Brother Brandon, Chase Yard Bible ought to be the best around here. <laughs> I, I had one that Carol kept 
I'll call them brother and sister because uh, uh, I'm not the judge. That I had, that I bought, paid, I, they don't, they're out of print. And I saw it on eBay, and I gave a couple hundred dollars for it. I think $280, maybe $300, whatever it was. But one of them had it on there for 550 bucks, but I bought a... Uh, uh, a parallel Bible of a KJV and, and, a, and a revised version. And uh, it was 11-point font. But when you go into the revised version, it doesn't go to the KJV. It goes revised text. And uh, the, rev the revised, it goes there, and it drops down to a 6-5-point font. Very small. She kept on, she'd use that, and it would make her help her so much, and she kept on. So I gave her the Bible. It wasn't one week, and she gave it to Brother Brandon Cheshire. She just had to have it worked on me a month to get that thing. When I gave it, it wasn't one week, and she gave it to Brother Cheshire. I said, what happened to the Bible? Now, well, I, you, Brother, Brother Cheshire won't, so I gave it to him. And you, and you... Worked on me a month because you just had to have that Bible and gave it away in less than a week. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand that kind of thinking. So we're not giving those Bibles back. That wasn't theirs to begin with. I bought that. And the 1611 Bible and the big one's in that office in there. <laughs> Which the original had the, apoc uh, the uh, Apocrypha with it also, you know, in the original 1611. But then later on, the canon was changed and they dropped the, uh, the Apocrypha out of the Word of God. And the many things that Jesus did that in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And each one's showing a different side to Jesus. Matthew, there's a Jesus that the world conceives as a hump-shouldered, effeminate-looking man with long hair that's just a little bit more than a hippie in free love. In the 60s, it was called the Jesus Movement. Everybody had, you just, uh, anybody going? Fan, fan, better wet flowers in you. Something like that. Flowers in your hair. You know, it was uh, Woodstock. Long hair, free love, stoned out of your mind. And, uh, I remember the 60s, so I must not have been there. <laughs> it was the time that uh, war, 55,000 souls died in Vietnam. We pulled out and let them have South Vietnam anyway. Korean War, we did the same thing in South Korea. We pulled out and let them have it. Why did we go on those two wars? Because we didn't back Israel in World War II until it was we were bombed December the 7th and 41 in Pearl Harbor because we turned our back on Israel then. God made America pay. And she's not through paying yet because we've turned our back on Israel again. Netanyahu is 100% right in his assessment of leading that nation. He is 100% right. I believe the man is definitely sent from God. I've always felt a special anointing on that man that he is God's chosen for Israel. I think he's one of the wisest men over there. They couldn't have a better man in, in Israel than him. But yet America will not stand with him or with him at all. Now we have... And I have not figured this out yet. George Mesita has asked us to preach in this from August the 7th to the 14th, which we can't make. I didn't even get it. August the 9th to the 17th, the seven-day conference in uh, 
in uh, Kenya. And a huge church. And I mean, you so many people, you can't even number them. And he asked us, he went to the website and asked us to preach the convention there for seven days. Well, I didn't get the messages. I don't read the messages on DBM. So I didn't get it until I said, there's some messages on the other side. And the other night, I had, I think it was 15, 17, I don't know, messages. And one of them was, please come and be the guest speaker, sole speaker for their conference. I showed Sister Beard the pictures of it, and there's literally thousands. I don't know how many thousands. It's, it's up there. I know he's not one God, but I showed her the rest of the pictures, and they were, had their hands. They were from Kenya, ministers. They went to the White House. They had pictures of them, George Masita and the rest of them, probably how many, 25, 30 ministers, laying hands on Barack Obama, President Obama. And then he went over there for a three-day crusade. <laughs> and it has Apostle Obama speaker and the other speaker with him remember who Bill Clinton Clinton <laughs> and there's so many people there you can't even imagine and one woman said well you can laugh but it put us on the map of what it say it built their church one brochure of them that wouldn't know God, if he came up and bit them, built their church. Now they're asking us. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the Lord's up to. I don't know. I don't know this man from Adam. I wish I'd have got it earlier because we'd have taken it. He said, now at first, I read it, and I said, is this beer? I said, this I said, babe, come over and look at this. He said he's going to pay for everything. But she pointed out, no, local transportation, not the airfare. Nobody pays for airfare. So I didn't get excited about it as I did before. Because I ain't seen nobody yet pay for airfare. So he gives me, I said, I'm sorry, I just, I just saw the, but we're one God. Jesus only of the apostles' doctrine. That's all we stand for. He comes back and gives me a phone number, please call me. Well, I got that this morning. That's one of the three hours worth of stuff I was doing. It was late coming here. To call him, wrote out his numbers, George Masita. M-I-S-E-D-A, he's on Facebook. Check it out. I don't know what's up. I would like to be able to take the whole crew over there to a, in a crusade like that. Whew. Just give us the offerings. I want the offerings. You'd have to have crowd control. That old... Oh, Reinhardt Bunkies had 10, 15 die because they would scramble in there in so many thousands that they would literally, when they leave, they'd be four, five, ten dead bodies on the ground, suffocating. And his response was, I, I just preach. I don't, you know, I can't help it. Anybody that follow Reinhardt Bunky needs another, needs a head examiner. They love the whore. Same way with uh, Benny Hinn and the rest of them. And I don't understand about people in this Jesus. But the Jesus that we're going to see,
easily be untreated. But the Jesus, when you take a look at the Constitution, and we haven't looked at it in a while, take a look at Matthew 5. This is the Constitution of the kingdom of heaven, not the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, it is the kingdom of God, Somebody, if you want to go into a little debate. But see, that is true. It is the kingdom of God, but it's the kingdom of God in a higher glory. There's no other kingdom but the kingdom of God. So when it says nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, that's not a redundant phrase. Nation against nation is the nations of this world. And we can talk about nation against nation, the nation of, of the world, the nation of the world against the nation of Israel. We don't look at it like nation against nation, well, the Chinese against the Japanese. Nation against nation is the nation against Israel. It's implied because it's the nation against nation. Why does every nation hate Israel? Because of God. Because whenever the Genesis 12 promise comes, that's the nation. Genesis 15 is a seed. Genesis 12 is a nation. So we don't turn our back or hit Israel as a nation. That is suicidal. And yet, that's what we're doing. How many knows that President Barack Obama is not a Native American, that you must be born in America to be eligible to be a president, and he was born in Kenya? The one that was just killed of Onesimus was his mother. That's supposed to be a great prophetess. It's kin to Obama. And this George Masita is one of the ministers that's high ranking in Nairobi that's opened the door for Uganda to come in to Nairobi and work together. And George Masita all, just in his heart, some reason or other, wants us. Now what would that tell you? That God's going to put us before kings and magistrates. You don't get any higher office in America than, he, than the president. And he's one of the ones that were flown over to D.C. to lay hands on him. Got a picture of him, showing me laying hands on President Barack Obama along with about other 20 in the Oval Office in D.C. Picture taken in D.C. Well, that's, that's great. But what do you want us to do? Pat you on the back? You think you have a word because you, you were invited to the White House? You see what I'm saying? But by the same token, what if God were to give us favor with the magistrates. Then the nations would be open to us. I prophesied to Sister Beard, she hadn't said anything, but she about 20 new friends that she's going to have that'll hold her dear, and not one of them, they will be rich aristocrats of the nations. And they want to be friends with her because she is very, not just, not just uh, uh, speaks kindly and all that and shows the love of Christ, but that, I am, my wife has always been a fashion. Her, she was born primping. She came out and grabbed a comb and a brush and started primping when she was born. That's the first thing she did. She, instead of saying mama, it was Mira. <laughs> That's the first word that came out of her mouth. And you know it's the truth. Even though I'm a liar in Kenya, I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> Y'all, what God has positioned us for, and I believe it's the Spirit of God. Now, if you're deceived, 
And everyone speaks great swelling words of man's wisdom and pompous spirit. And it's a spirit. And it is Baal, all good, no cross. Prosperity to the nth degree. It has an unction from the spirit. It will give you dreams and visions and speak daily to you. And when you're in a pulpit, it will move on you to speak to people under it. That's Baal. It's the spirit of Baal. It is a spirit and a strong one. The spirit of Baal, though, is not a spirit of pride. It is a spirit of Baal. <laughs> and they all have the same spirit. They feel and move in that spirit. And there'll be healings demonstrated. The only way you know it is, do you confess that Jesus Christ is in the flesh? Is he the only Lord God? Is it Jesus only? Because I don't care if you raise the dead before breakfast every morning and blue sparks fly off of your heel. Amen. If you do not confess our Lord Jesus him only as God Almighty, the man, you are an antichrist. No matter how great and how many scriptures you quote, did you notice That every doctrine there is in the world is backed up and built upon Scripture. Every, the Church of Christ, said in making melody in your heart. Didn't say play on an instrument. Making melody, so you have no instrument. There is it, it's in the Word of God. Making melody in your heart. Mm -hmm. Okay, no instrument. Well, then what you do then is that you literally take, because that is Scripture. But is it led of the Holy Ghost? Well, let everything that hath breath praise you. Praise him on the high sound of sound. Praise him on the organ. Now, you've got a problem that it will not coincide with the Old Testament because there's nowhere in the New Testament that they got an instrument out and banged the cords on it. Jesus led them in a hill. Jesus was the song leader. Paul and them, after they were beat in the prison, and before they sang a hymn, sang a hymn, they knew what it was to make melody in their heart. But when are we not, when we have instruments up here, are we not making melody in our heart? When a person plays just a solo on an instrument, that melodic from the actual notes themselves speak of the word of God in the Aleph Tav, in the sevens. Because it's all sevened. The word of God sevened. In the beginning, Bereshit bara, Bereshit bara, Elohim eight, Hashabayim, Bayert, Hayert. He starts it with seven. He ends it with seven. And it's a book of sevens in the book of the Revelation. It's called the book of sevens. Or the feast of sevens or the feast of prophecy. Seven seals, seven trumps, seven vows, seven angels, or the seven churches, etc., etc., etc. Seven, completion. When you play music, every note has a spirit with it. Every note. Whether it's slow, fast, it has a spirit with it. The way you dress has a spirit with it. Articles that you have around your house, spirits hang on to those different articles. The Urim and the Tumim, or the two rocks there, you grasp in the hands, which are the positive and negative, that might light up the breastplate of judgment, which were the seven stones of the breastplate. 
it worked like a great big battery. Somebody said, where'd the Jews come from? God. So there was a positive and a negative. There's two chairmen, one on each end. There, he never had an Adam and a Steve. It's Adam and an Eve. When you play a note, a note has waves with it. And you can take a, a, an audiometer on the note, take the wavelength, and they'll tell you what note it is. What's the name? 440. Boing, A440. And they'll have wavelength. What's your scale? A, B, C, D, E, L, G. Then it goes back to A, 7. Every augmented, diminished, every, every sixth, every suspended fourth, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, major seventh, or regular seventh, major seventh, ninth, thirteenth, sixteenth, 32nd note, augmented, diminished, and every, it will always be a variation of the 7. An F sharp. No, it's a G flat. God does it the same way. Lunar, F sharp. Solar, G flat. So whichever way you look at it, solar, lunar, or prophetic calendars, it's all God, just whichever way you're looking at it. And he speaks it, instead of just three realms, he speaks it infinitely. That no matter how deep you go in the resonance, I, I don't know if I'm speaking to you or not, You like my handkerchief? That is not mine. I left mine at the house, and my lovely wife let me use hers, and I started not to use it. <laughs> Take a look a minute. In Revelation... If you take a look there, in Revelation, and then we're going to come back there. We'll, we'll come back to uh, Matthew 5, 6, 7 in a minute. If you take a look there, and uh, if you would please, Revelation 20, and verse 14, the wall of the city had 12 foundation, and, and in them, in them, the 12 foundations in them. Now, Zerubbabel, we know, has laid the foundation, and his hands of Zerubbabel will surely finish it. Zerubbabel. Born in Babylon, come out of. And in each of these foundations, there's names. In, not on. In. It's the mortar. It's the fire. It's the connection. It's the life. It's the, it's the life-giving force, God himself. And in, in the foundation. In them, the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. The names. Now we go to the names. And we break all the names down and what they meant. And the 12 is a perfect government of God, but we have the variety there. In the book of Acts, when they're going to 
and they're going to have shipwreck. But there will be loss of no man's soul even though God tears the ship up. And they sounded, and it was only so many fathoms, and they knew they were going to hit the shore. That's a church coming into the knowledge of Jesus Christ. How deep is it? Well, how deep? How deep, you, how deep is it going to? <laughs> they, they. And the fair havens. And I'm going to throw you around a little bit. Acts, the 22nd chapter. It was determined that we should sail into Italy. They deliver Paul and certain, what's so certain? Y'all have been, you, you brethren and sisters in the Lord, the handmaids of God, and the ministers here. You know when it says certain that it's Palmona, the wonderful number, the revealer of secrets. Daniel 8, that saint, and that certain saint, and Jesus said there was a certain man. Well, who do you think that certain man is? 